After spending early autumn in the tundra flats, I relocate deep into the Brooks Range Mountains in search of dull sheep. In many ways, the pursuit of a full curl ram is opposite that of caribou. Caribou are typically easy to find, but move about erratically, which makes them difficult to hunt. Finding a mature ram, on the other hand, is typically exhausting and occasionally not even possible in 10 days. However, the habits of these majestic creatures are quite predictable. What's least certain about mountain sheep is the physical, mental, emotional, and often spiritual journey one experiences while hunting them. The countless painful miles trigger something inside the soul. The hunger, the sweat, the blood, the blisters, and the misery will most certainly change you. Many who try it vow to never return. For others, myself included, living life in sheep country becomes an addiction part of one's identity. Because it's in these sheep mountains, many of us are introduced to the truest version of ourselves. You ever ridden in an airplane like that before, Jeff? First time. Oh, that's a that's a trip in itself, isn't it? Man. Now your your wife bought this hunt for you, right? Yes, she did. What was that? What was the story behind that? You know, we talked about it. You know, I I watched I started watching some of your videos and and uh, yeah, that's cool. Uh, figured you wanted to give her a shot, huh? Yeah. Like, we talked about it, and you know, over the years, it's been several times I was close to pulling the trigger and doing it, but didn't because I couldn't justify spending that kind of money on yep. myself. I spent it on the, on the family, but I never did it for myself. Yeah, yeah, you must have a good woman, she made the decision oh, for you. Yeah, she did. <laughs> yeah, that was a shock. Oh, that's cool. I drove off the road. <laughs> Jeff's wife called me about probably two year and a half ago or so ago, yeah. And uh, so yeah, my husband Jeff's been wanting to do a sheep hunt, so I'm gonna buy one for him. And so we kind of went through the process, so I called Jeff up one day and here he is. So let the adventure begin. I'm ready. Let's do her. We're loaded with five days worth of grub. Weather permitting, we won't need five days, but you always gotta figure for at least one weather day. Can't hunt tonight, but we're just gonna get started and try to find a sheep, so we're gonna go past that, the magnet there. Set up camp tonight, uh, and then as soon as we get good weather, cross over, 
come out this other drainage right here and then probably go hunt if we don't get anything we'll hunt up hike up that one ways so we're ready to do this jeff i'm ready all righty we're off and running picking our way up the draw haven't seen a living animal yet we're only about an hour into it i guess Morning of first day of hunting, so call it day one. Set up spike camp, which we're just leaving, probably see it in the background. Last night, I don't know, a little after nine, I guess. And uh, got up this morning, six o'clock, had some breakfast. We're just gonna sneak up this drainage. About a mile and a half around the bend. Check it out. If we don't spot anything good there, I'm gonna go climb up to that saddle, run that ridge, cross over to the back side. So, this is a similar hunt that I've done several times over the years. Pretty good country. Ram's been there a while. We are moving on up. I'm gonna go as high as we can till we run out of water and fill up our bottles and I got a bladder and cross over right up there. Yeah, it's amazing the things you see up here. Dead caribou, bear scat. I know up here somewhere, I see it every year. The pile of moose poo, right about to the top of this saddle. I suppose they do the same thing we do. Feed their way up a drainage and cross over and feed their way out of another one. So, I guess if that's the way the animals are approaching these drainages, then maybe we're doing something right. That's not, that's not old at all. Good chance we'll run into that bear. We saw tracks of a sow with at least one of this year's cubs. We actually saw a wolverine track back there as well. So yeah, we might, uh, yeah, that's no more than a couple days old, I don't think. So we're, uh, we're still on the hunt. I don't know if that's from a golden eagle or what, some big predatory bird. Don't see that very often. Just about to top over and a fresh. looked at it real quick, figured it was a sheep. It's actually a wolf. That isn't going to help the sheep hunting any. Well, we did find actually not very far from where that wolf is, probably only 400 yards, a couple of sublegal rams. Need about three more inches on that bigger one. It's about seven ace curl. Fortunately, the rain held off of us. It was raining a little bit when we got up. But Yeah, it almost looks like that wolf is 
Maybe moving in on them. Should be uphill thermals, so he's not getting their scent, but he might be smelling their tracks very well. So right there's the wolf. And right there's the rams. In the left corner of the frame we have the wolf. In the upper right hand corner we got two rams. We call this area Rock Pile. I've hunted it for nearly two decades. A pack of wolves has lived here for as long as I can remember. In the early years, the wolves were flourishing on caribou and moose, and undoubtedly sheep in the wintertime as they congregated into the lowlands and windswept ridges in search of exposed forage. But a willow blight and a string of harsh winters slashed the moose population to a fraction of what it once was. The caribou, which had been overpopulated for far too long, had consumed the lichen they live on and no longer migrated through the area. The two remaining wolves left in this pack were forced to concentrate on killing sheep, which is all but impossible for them to do this time of year. I've hunted rock pile three seasons since Jeff's hunt. With no food left to sustain them, the wolves are gone. Chalky bone piles from kills of old are the only evidence the pack ever existed. But this area will regenerate. One day the moose and caribou will return and the wolves will be back. It appears that the sheep won this time. Wolves are bedded on that promontory. Gave up the chase. All this country. These sheep have Jerome, and we have Jerome as well. All these mountains, as far as you can see, just one little speck on the map. One o'clock. Working our way up to the head. Climb over here. I've definitely seen rim several times in this drainage. Weather seems to be pretty well holding off. Cooling off though, I wouldn't be surprised if we get a little snow tonight. set up here. What do you think? 700 yards? Oh, at least a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> we got them 300 yards away. They just got up and fed down in this little cut. That's the little one. We were hoping there's a, another one with them. But we're going to eyeball them real good. Got tucked out of the wind. We got two more rams. Neither are legal up there as well. Keeping her fingers crossed, there's a third big old ram in here. A younger ram has stepped out. Bigger one is right behind that little hump on the left hand side. Down in there somewhere. Still holding on to hope there's another one in there. Yeah, I looked them over pretty good. Figure he's seven, but I can't make him eight. We were definitely in a good position there, probably 500 yards away now, but had him at 300. Pretty cool to see him though, huh? Yeah, it is. Told, told Jeff, you know you're pretty high when you see six rams and they're all below you. So that's kind of nice approaching from that way when you can.
I don't think he likes the looks of it. He wants to go down, but he's not sure how to go about it. That one ram will definitely be legal next year. This ram is close. He needs one more year. Well, we got a pretty fine camping spot for the evening entertainment. We got a couple of young rams to watch. Well, what'd you think of day one, Jeff? It's hard work, but it's fun. Beautiful area. We saw one, two, saw the two rams the wolves ran off. Six rams total. One was pretty darn close, but nothing legal. So, we're at the head of this drainage, so tomorrow we're gonna ease our way on down this one and crossed over just right to the head so now we'll come out we'll hunt that we'll poke up one little side drainage down there is where it's at and then we'll probably probably have to camp again because the, this other drainage it, it'd just be too far to try to do it all in one day I think kind of play it by ear see what the weather does as always just see what we see and go from there but yeah, it was a pretty good day. First day it was exciting. If we can have that much excitement every day for the next nine, we'll be doing pretty good. The weather held off held off on us, which I was a little bit surprised of. Actually, it almost seems like it's lifting a few little raindrops falling now and again. But yeah, I was really glad that we made that big climb, climbed up over the hill. I don't know what it was. I guess over 2,000 feet, anyways. I'm glad we didn't get uh, fogged out on that climb. Yeah, you can see he's well short of making a full circle in his horns. I looked him up and down, looks like a seven year old. Definitely don't have the confidence to for sure call him eight or even think he's eight. Morning, day two. Got one young ram. Pretty sure that's one that the wolves ran off yesterday. Picking our way down. A little bit of sprinkle here and there. A little bit of snow up high last night. We got a couple of ewes, a couple of yearlings, and one lamb. Well, we poked up into this side drainage. Nice bull caribou. He is no longer. But yeah, it's a pretty nice one. Oh, it's a beautiful valley. Oh man, it's, it's just so cool the way that creek parallels the base of the mountain. The colors are awesome. This is what you come to Alaska for, Jeff, is why I do it anyway. See stuff like this. Beautiful. Then uh, we saw some caribou antlers up a different drainage. Up right there. Or must I assume it's a bear, he's ripping bite and hold. I don't know if it's a cub or maybe a mature bear. I don't know, but he's just ripping shreds off of it like it's a newspaper. And I know this was this year because I've seen this moose antler several times and never noticed this. Kind of interesting. So we're just keeping on trucking. 
Haven't seen any new rams today, some lambs in use, but that's it. I had to give Jeff some authentic Alaskan flavor and run him through the tundra for a little while. This stuff sucks. <laughs> Soft, spongy, and uneven. Oh yeah. Yeah, you appreciate good hard pack after you walk through the tussocks for a while. Day three, fresh patch of sheep hide, not the kind of sheep sign we want to see. She's a rainy one today. No sheep so far. If the guy ever wanted to hear a wolf howl, I'm sure you'd have heard it when this, this guy was pooping this mess out. You got hooves and bones and hair and hide and not a good sign. seen any sheep today but we got some sore muscles this rain's been pretty well just drizzly snotty all day we're right up to the continental divide and it's pretty, been raining here all day for sure we're gonna peek in one last little basin and then go over and check out one more and that'll be pretty much anything that might hold sheep in it up here we'll keep plugging away hopefully we can get lucky day four. Actually the sun's kind of trying to burn through but we got a breeze from the north coming off the Arctic Ocean blowing this moist air in. It's hard to explain, but for some reason, my favorite sheep hunts are the ones where we went days without seeing anything. Where my client and I ran out of mole skin for the blisters on our feet, and we were forced to spend cold, wet, miserable days in a tent, or even siwashed on a mountainside. When all physical energy is consumed and the mind has grown numb from looking for reasons to continue, emotions get primal and it's in this dark pit of emptiness and despair that as humans we're forced to become honest with ourselves our constitution and our motives are revealed from here we either grow and press forward or quit and retreat I dare say that these are the moments that sheep hunters live for. Day number six. Getting geared up, ready to go, got some good weather. Gonna head upstream. This is a good spot where I've taken a lot of rams over the years. In this well, in this whole general area. Beautiful morning. We've had fog and rain the first five days every morning. Actually, the day Jeff got here, too, it was raining. Kind of hiked up about six miles of our first bike camp. So hopefully we can have a good day, get a full day of hunting, get lucky. Just spotted, just spotted a couple of rams right up in this draw here. They're up on a bench. 
up fairly high. We're gonna sneak in a little closer and try to get an eyeball on them. They should start feeding pretty quick. It's almost six o'clock. Climb up there, see what we got. Won't do that back in Washington, huh? No, sir. You dip her right out and start drinking. That red sky in the morning, sailors take warning. Got a couple rams up here. We're looking at one of them. I'm just gonna hope that they feed into that draw. Should be getting up to feed pretty quick. What do you think of that? Unbelievable. <laughs> Yeah, there's no way to get any closer right now without them seeing us. Just tucked in right there. Yeah, we got two rams up here. They're both just right at full curl. A little, little bit dark yet. I wouldn't want to give the for sure go ahead on either one yet, but they're both just right there. One's a fair bit more massive than the other. He's probably at least eight years old. But the younger one just came and butted the older one out of his bed. So hopefully they'll get up eventually, start feeding in that draw where we can slip in, get a little closer. They're probably, oh, just under a mile away, I would guess. Well, they started feeding down, which I figured and hoped they would. Definitely gonna have to get a better eye on them. Uh, the ones, the one I'd definitely say is sublegal. The one is just right there. So we're just gonna sneak a little closer. Let's see what we got. That yeah, wind's real strong in our face, downdraft. I don't think there's any way to get above them. These mountains are too tall and too rocky. We'll wait for a perfect broadside. You really like it. Just wait for him to stop. Yep. Wait. Wait, wait. He'll turn broadside again. Just high, a little high. Ah, oh, you hit him. Yep.
He's gonna he's gonna go down. You got him, man. You want to try to? Did you? You might have hit him on that first one. I think I, I did. I thought I spined him. I, I didn't know he. Well, he stayed up. I didn't hear a report. He acted funny on that. Yeah, he though. did. He just he just acted kind of stiff-legged. <sighs> that was way. That's farther we like to shoot, but they're they're spread out so far, and they're moving around in here, and these thermals are going to switch at some point. Good job. Good shot. All that long range practicing paid off. Oh. I was shaking like a leaf. Yeah, well, we were cold, we were getting wet. Whew. Yeah, now I'm starting to get shakes. A little bit nervous and all that good stuff. I would have liked to have gotten closer, but there's two rams up above and they were sublegal. And this other one down below, yeah, I just didn't know how else to do it, and uh, um, Jeff was confident he could make the shot. It was uh, 640 yards, and he was all dialed in. He was out in the open, so we figured we'd give it a give it a go. Yeah, we were sitting in the rain. Of course, we're a little bit excited too, but sitting in the rain and cold. So yeah, we'll go up there and check him out. Ready to go take a look at him? I'm ready. Kind of got our wits about us a little bit. Kind of, we are able to stand up. We were kind of, well you can see we're right here. And these rams were up in this drainage. Well two of them were, where am I at? Right up in here. And then the other, this one was down lower where he was bedded. So I was watching him for quite a while. Well, we were watching him for over two hours. We had rain squalls coming through, it got real windy. And uh, the legal ram started feeding out on this face and the other two were up above them. And they seemed to be staying separate quite a bit. So that made us nervous trying to make an approach, especially from below, because there's really no way to get above them in this canyon. And uh, what, 640, Jeff? 640 on the money. And Jeff said he, he had a rock at home at 646 yep. that he practiced and practiced and practiced and he said he could put him in a about a circle about the size of the bottom of a pop can. Yeah. About there. <coughs> and the wind laid down for a little bit. And uh, I figured it was our best chance. And uh, we're getting eight, it's about 8.30 now. Usually somewhere about 9, 10 thermals can switch. Seems pretty steady now. Like it's good wind direction, but yeah. Just figured that was the, the route to go and not sure what all happened on the shots, but we got a ram down. We're on our way to go check them out. 10 minutes to nine, just as we're hiking up this draw, we got a huge black, we got a wind right at our back now. Thermals just switch right now. So yeah, that was, I'm not a, can't say that I'm a huge fan of long range shooting like that, but I guess it's nice to have in your arsenal and I guess it was just the right time and the right place for it. And uh, real fortunate it worked out. Perhaps the greatest challenge and most rewarding aspect of hunting is getting as close to the animal as possible. That said, each scenario is different. Jeff's rifle weighed 15 pounds, which is twice the weight of a standard mountain rifle. He chose to pack it because of its precision and his proficiency in shooting it. On many occasions over the course of my guiding career, I've restrained clients from shooting rams, some less than 300 yards away. In this sheer rocky canyon, it was all but impossible to get closer to the sheep without them seeing us. Also, the ram we targeted was totally relaxed. 
All of this factored in my allowing Jeff to take the shot. Whether you're hunting with a long bow or a meticulously engineered high-powered rifle, ultimately it's the individual hunter's moral and ethical obligation to take all measures to kill one's prey efficiently and humanely. binoculars with me. Tell what he is. I don't know if that's one of the ones that we saw earlier or not. Yeah, it must be the other two that we saw. The one was just short, the other one was right there. It wasn't for sure full curl from what I saw. His last spore, we were down in that canyon. Wind was blowing hard that way. Right here, it's just right in our face. Go ahead and get your hands on him, man. Wait. I'm holding you back. He wasn't two steps from sliding down the hill. He was about a quarter of a step. He's got a good curl to him. Careful, careful you don't get him started. You probably won't let him go, you're crazy enough. Jeff's a framer, I've done a lot of framing in my day and I know, well they're probably not quite as crazy as roofers and flat workers, but framers can be a pretty wild bunch. Oh, I can't believe we finally made it happen. We, uh, we hunted hard in another several drainages a lot further away but <clears throat> didn't pan out got close to a couple but weren't legal we got up early this morning and got back in here we found a couple rams in this drainage it took us quite a bit of time we had to make a longer shot than what we would have liked to have done but it all paid off I'm just excited that uh, we got one down I can't believe I'm here in the Brooks Range with Billy and I can't wait to get back home and share this with uh, my girls and my friends. They're, they're going to be excited. told Jeff, I said one of the beauties of Alaska is to come up here and see nobody. You know, and there's not many places in Alaska where you can do that. Just go hike wherever you want and run into nobody. Uh, and that's, that's, that's where the true Alaskan wilderness and the Alaska experience is in my mind. And yeah, it was a, a great adventure. Here we are, day six. We've been uh, putting on lots of miles, been spending pretty much the whole, uh, the whole hunt spiked out. This one, we actually were just doing a little day hunt uh, for today. So yeah, he's uh, he was quartering too. I think, I think he probably caught the back of the lung, a little bit of liver, but uh, yeah, I mean, it was a good shot. He slammed him on, uh, I don't know, I don't know which one it was for sure, but uh, it was, it was pretty much right there. The long range shooting, the more, you know, the more I'm around guys that are, have the capability to do it, I, you know, it's kind of got its place and this, this was a good opportunity to do it. And Jeff, man, you made her happen. Yeah. Thank you. All the practice paid off. Yeah. Well, we actually got a pretty decent day here. Got the ram all butchered up. Just uh, doing the finish caping. Working around the eyeballs right now. 
And once we get that done, cut the skull, pack her up, head for home. We're only uh, yeah, maybe a little over, yeah, maybe three miles from camp, maybe. So that's pretty sweet. And uh, yeah, we'll have an early day today. Got the uh, carcass cleaned up good, two bags of meat. Got a, we're doing a half body mount, horns are cut, and uh, life is good. Life is very good. And we got a flask of whiskey. <laughs> no Coke, I assume. You didn't pack a can of Coke no, up here. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it is. You can do her? I, I got all the faith in the world in you. <laughs> all right. Here we go, bounding down the mountain. You at the bottom. I'll either be rolling or walking, one or the other. Right. Slow and steady. Sweet deal. Got her done. Day six. I like it, I like it, I like it. Pack this baby back to camp. 1.30 in the afternoon. Good deal, good deal. Hey, it's me. Um, just wondering if you liked apples. I got a ram down. How you like them apples? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we just got it off the mountain, got them butchered up and skinned out, and we're just, we got a couple miles back to base camp, and they're gonna come in and pick up the meat and hide and horns. Anyway, uh, I just wanted to let you know. All right, hope you're doing good. Love you, and I'll see you soon. Bye. Nice. Clever. <laughs> Pilots were free that afternoon, so we packed our camp, hopped in the plains, and flew 30 miles to an area that always holds grizzly bears, and occasionally caribou. After seven grueling days of chasing sheep, I planned to find a glassing knob near camp and wait for the animals to come to us. I cherished the thought of resting my legs and my sore feet, and maybe even sneaking in a midday nap. But just like the time I tried riding my bicycle with no hands, or the time that I suggested that my wife ask my mother for cooking lessons, the rest of this hunt didn't play out the way I imagined it would. We're up on a knob. Hunting for grizzly and caribou. There's our new campsite. Climbed up on this knob. Looking over this canyon. Jeff's glassing away like a good soldier. If we don't see anything here, we're gonna probably just stay here for another 15, 20 minutes, maybe a half hour at the most. If we don't see anything, we're gonna go down through that little notch and then glass that big belly there. Yeah, it's been kind of rainy pretty much every morning. Been raining last hour or so. Got a little break here. Clouds are pretty high. Hopefully it'll break off and get a nice day. Yesterday we definitely had some sunshine, which was very welcome. Beautiful mountains. They get nice and dark when they get a little rain on them. This has almost gotten to be an all too familiar scene in my videos. Sitting under a tarp in the rain. Much better being under the tarp than not though. Glassing for bears, caribou, nothing so far. Morning of day seven. 
Well, it's official. There's caribou around. It's the only one we've seen so far. 169, that's it, huh? Look at that, uh, I don't know what you really call it. A lot of people call it a mane, but it's kind of the opposite of a mane. Really a That's, beard. yeah. I don't know if I've ever noticed one waving back and forth like that. Not females. <laughs> hey. Yeah. Yeah. Here is tendons clicking. Is that a tendon? Yep. Been sitting here for probably 10 15 minutes and I already spotted two grizzly bears. One, I haven't got a real good look at, he's quite a ways away. Way over there he was heading the other direction. And I saw this one moving with just with my naked eye. He's right over in here somewhere. This one's not very big here. Maybe try to get the scope on him. Ready for this, Jeff? Let's give her a go. Mm, sounds like a plan. We got a bear. Just spotted him a little bit ago. He's been cruising right along. He's right up in here right now. He's been working this way, so we're gonna scoot out into this valley a ways and figure out exactly which way the wind's blowing and kinda make a plan from there. We're in a real wide valley, about two miles, two miles across. Pretty flat. He was working right along the creek bottom. Pretty much just heading upstream, so the bear doubled back on us. Well, they didn't really double back, but he started actually working the drainage right toward where we were, where we were perched. So he was cruising this way. We hiked all the way down there. Caught a glimpse of him in here, working up this way. We'll try for this dude again. Think we can find a bigger one? I think so. We've seen bigger ones in here, so. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is a three-year-old bear. Four at the absolute most, just a very young bear. Well, on to plan B. Passed up this bear close by, then there's another bear. We have no idea what it is. Feeding in a willow thicket all morning. Or either on some of these soap berries or digging these willow roots. And there's that bear right there. That little sucker moves up to our camp and eats our sheep meat, then we'll kill him. <laughs> Terrorizes our camp. So we're letting him walk and then uh, there was another bear up here. We think maybe that's why this smaller bear was beating feet so fast. He was coming from that direction where this other bear is. 
I think this one's just a little bit bigger. A young boar, probably a five-year-old boar is my guess. So we're thinking we're gonna go after him. They're mounting up, we've been having really bad flash flood rain showers and time to time, but we're gonna mount up and try to chase him down. got to be a good, clear, perfect shot. How do you feel? With the yeah. yeah, with the, with the rest. It's, I think I got kind of right there. It's good. What can you see? Not good. Uh, there's a little bit of brush in front of him. Maybe he'll step out. Yeah, we don't want to rush the first shot here, that's for sure. Yeah, we can always move closer. Okay. Go and try to move closer. Maybe he'll come. He might come this way. He's facing this way right now. Wait till he stops. Wait till he stops. Hammer him right in the chest. Hit him again. What's that? Yep. Okay. All right. Let's get up. I think you you crumped him pretty good. I think. What in the world? Yeah. Let's. We'll get up there right away. We get on safety. Why? Why did he booger all of a sudden? We weren't moving. Let me just check. All right. Make sure you got a live round in. Yeah. Okay. On safety, I'll let you lead the way. All right, I'll let you lead the way. Low power scope. All right, go ahead. Follow up on him right away. I think he's, I think he's in a ball, but. Well, we got our second chance. <laughs> Bear spooked, and then we were just he came. Well, I'll just, we'll just make sure he's dead first. Yeah, he came down here. They'll always run downhill when they're wounded. I'd just be kind of looking up over there. If he's up there, he's dead. Does the shot feel good? Yeah. Okay. Okay, I see him. You got him. We almost blew it. <laughs> Oh man, I'm so glad we got that bear. <laughs> For the first, not saying I haven't made bad decisions, but the guy blew that first stock, my water bottle holder, and I got a metal water bottle. When I set the pack up for uh, Jeff to shoot off of, 
my water bottle clanked my rifle and that bear he didn't even he didn't even look he just ran he just started running yeah. didn't he yeah. and i told i told jeff before i'm like yeah you better load up now because bears the sound of metal they don't like it so but we got him anyway good shot and so what this bear did we boogered him and then he ran 650 yards uh where do you, yeah he was laying over there yeah. he just laid on that gravel laid down and so then we worked around and we were just sneaking up. We just put our poles. I just told Jeff, like, let's drop our packs. And all of a sudden, here he came out. So, let's go take a look at him. We got a bear down. Well, we snuck around, got got back behind the brush, got the brush in front of us, and uh, snuck up on him. And we were just taking our packs off and getting everything laid down. He said that he was going to be close, and he was. He came out uh, probably 100 yards, maybe even less, and, and gave us a nice, nice quartering towards this shot, and uh, got him down with one shot. Yeah, he definitely hammered him pretty hard. Yeah, he, he came out of just as we were setting our packs down, and we were just real still, and he just kind of kept walking towards us, and Jeff was all ready to go, and I'm like, well, just he's he doesn't know what we are. I think he thinks yes, we're a rock. Wait for him to turn before you go down, and, and then just for no reason, he just darted up the hill. Fortunately, he stopped, so... But yeah, uh, Arctic Grizzly got a beautiful hide, not a very big bear by any means, uh, probably three, four year old bear. Um, but yeah, we uh, got it down on a combination sheep deal, so we're looking for a caribou still as well. So we've got three days to find a caribou. We saw one, one I guess, decent bull, small bull this morning. And so we got two out of the way. We're going to go concentrate on caribou now. Yep. Congrats, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you very much. I've never seen anything like it in all my years of guiding in Alaska. 19 of them, mind you. I made a phone call to base camp. I said, hey, we're seven miles from camp. Wondering if you could come pick up the bear and shuttle us back to camp. Right there's the bear. And you can see where Jake put the airplane. Now you need to do that when we shoot a 10-footer, Jake. <laughs> so yeah, that was uh, about a 120 yard bear pack. And I was cursing Jeff out when he grabbed the hide, but now I don't feel all that bad that he packed the hide. <laughs> so, very good. Man, that was nice. Wasn't the biggest bear hide or anything like that, but I mean, it was just nice not to have to pack the thing back seven miles. Not, nice not to even just have to walk back seven miles. So we'll just shuttle uh, shuttle up to camp. Okay, you'll be done. Beautiful evening. Looks like we might get a little rain shower. Jeff and I are just about ready to duck into the tent, but kind of a nice, nice evening. We've been having these little 20 minute rain showers about every hour or two. Mountains are beautiful, real dark. All that shale is real deep, navy blue, almost black. We hunted a few hours that morning. We saw another grizzly bear, but no bulls. The evening before, Jake had mentioned there were a few caribou scattered around base camp. He also informed us a storm front was brewing near the Russian coast and it was very possible we might get weathered in a couple days or more. He and Matt suggested we move from our camp deep in the mountains to the foothills near base camp where they could easily pick us up on short notice should the weather turn for the worse. This turned out to be a great decision in more ways than one.
I've never camped here before. This is a sweet little spot. It's cool, huh? Got all fancy and touched the brush. Oh yeah. It's a good cup pilot. Yeah, he is. Any cottonwoods up in this country, aspens or whatever they are, I guess. Some kind of cottonwood, I guess. This is a pretty cool little spot. Blueberries all over the place. Looks like good moose country. We just gotta find a caribou, Jeff. And a wolf. Then you'll be ready to go home. <laughs> Two more days left. We even got a few beers for tonight. Set her up, we'll have all kinds of fun. Sheep backstrap and garlic. How were the tenderloins last night? We had onions to go with it last night, but no garlic. New camp, new life, new bugs, all kinds of new stuff. Beer. New beer. <laughs> we're gonna try to get a caribou. We've got two more days, caribou and a wolf. That's what we're looking for. Kind of a cool spot, never hunted here before. A little bit buggy though, but actually they're pretty well gone away now. Yeah, uh, they're they're gnawing on you a little bit. But yeah, we're gonna feast. Morning and day nine. She's a beauty. Nice breeze rolling down the canyon. Bugs away. Perfect day. Now, as Jeff says, all we need is see a wolf chasing a big bull caribou. That's right. It'll be perfect. <laughs> well, we're making a mad dash. Seems like we've made a lot of mad dashes on this hunt. We're just sitting up on the hill for about maybe an hour. We haven't seen anything. All of a sudden, I look out, glass out in this big red flat, and there's two white dots, and put my glasses on them their caribou get the scope up I can see they're at least decent bulls and uh, it's the second and third caribou that we've seen in eight days so we're gonna give them a chase they're way out in the middle of this red thicket maybe you can get them there's a lone yellow willow bush they're just beyond them to the right a little bit they're way out there Probably, probably two and a half, maybe three miles, so. Well, we're about a half hour into the mad dash. I would say we've closed half the distance anyway. No one's seen any other caribou. Wind seems to be pretty good. Kind of a quartering headwind for us. So, yeah, hopefully we catch up to these buggers. Young moose. Looks like a yearling. Got a little sweat worked up. <laughs> Me too. We still got a got a visual on them though. We still got another mile to go. Or 50 minutes into it. He's coming towards us, so he'll step out in the open, so just relax. Let him come to us. Yeah. He's probably like 2.30, 2.40. So just wait till I say take him. And then I'll get zoomed in on him. But as soon as we get a nice open shot. Can you get your knee up to rest your elbow on it? Probably not, huh? Yeah, he's coming right at us. So yeah, it's gonna be about 200, so don't hold too high. You got a beautiful white neck on him. Can you 
Can you see him okay? Are you high enough? Yeah. We're gonna get a perfect broadside. If you really like it, let's go just a hair above halfway up and hit him right in the shoulder. Drilled him. Smoked him. He's done. Are you <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done. Oh man, that's a good bull. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, he's, he's a, oh, look at this one, he's coming right at us. Oh, my ears are ringing a little bit. Ooh. I've had worse, <laughs> but <clears throat> they're ringing. Well, oh hopefully the pilots are going to be our savior on this one again. I'm, I'm drenched in sweat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're, you're really sweating. I got a lot more hair and mine's totally, uh, Oh, totally oh. saturated. Now we just need the wolf to be chasing after him. It would be a perfect day. Nah, it's a great day. Yeah, might as well clear that. He's he's tatered. If you had two tags, you could plug another one. You'd have all kinds of caribou meat. Oh, they're walking right to us. Ah, uh, it's a. It's a lot better bull than the one we uh, passed on by our other camp. Holy cow. Whew, that was a mad dash for caribou there. Right over there is where we started from. And then camps. Right down in there. Congrats, man. Nice shot. Holy. Oh, that worked out good. He was... Uh, <laughs> Kind of angling right towards us. Actually, that wind's a little bit on our necks right now. It's been pretty steady, kind of in our face, quartering towards us. And whew, yeah, we were lucky that they weren't moving out too fast. You know, they were just kind of feeding along. And when we first spotted them, they were somewhere over in here. But whew, yeah, it worked out. How sweet. Caribou have been slim, to say the least. Got up here, we didn't see anything glassed all around. I don't know, they must have been bedded in here or something. All of a sudden I just saw the whites of their hind end. Or... That's cool, it's a good deal. I'm glad, uh, glad we could get it done for Jeff, he's a good guy. Kind of a once in a lifetime hunt for him. That was pretty awesome. This guy just doesn't know what to do without his compadre. Oh, that's a huge caribou, body-wise, anyway. And the rack doesn't look like any slouch. Big old neck. That's an old bull, I guarantee you his teeth are well-worn. He's got that Roman nose. Check out his bottom teeth. I guarantee you they're worn pretty well. Let's pull his lip. That's an old caribou, yep. Dude, <laughs> that's a cranker. <laughs> nice one. Thank you. Look at this thing. <laughs> that is really cool. That's a big old caribou. That neck like that, to be that white all the way up and down, I mean, you gotta do a shoulder mount on that sucker. Yes, sir. That'll be a beautiful, beautiful mount. That's a nice, that, that'll definitely be one of the biggest caribou of the year there. That was the side you shot him on. I hit him. No. Yeah, he died pretty quick. Oh, his well, his shoulders broke. Right there. Oh, yeah. Just tagged him right there. Probably seven, eight years old. Body wise, they don't get any they don't get much bigger than that one. Is that right? Yeah, he's big. His neck is huge. Getting ready for the rut. Big shoulders on him. Massive, massive caribou. Far and away better than the one we saw by that other camp. Yeah. Yeah. I was pretty sure from the hill that they were pretty good caribou, or at least one of them was. But I couldn't see them real good. Well, I'm standing over a dead caribou. <laughs> I 
Yeah, and and two days ago I shot a bear. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's a big He's a big bull. Yeah. You have to clear some wall space. Calling in the air support. Yeah. Yeah, he's a good bull. Okay, let me find some bull here. This is my kind of hunting. <laughs> You're, this is working out just, this is how we had planned. There's a river right over here, so we figured worst case scenario, we should be able to get by with a two mile pack rather than a four mile pack through brush and bog and not so fun stuff. This actually, this is actually pretty decent going here. Yeah, I think it's probably a little bit of a bugger to cross, huh? Yeah, yeah, it's a little sketchy, I guess. Yeah, I was kind of thinking the same thing. Probably rather go a little farther than have to cross if if it can be avoided. Okay, yeah, well, all that, is there water just runs right up against the bank over here, but I think I can less land in the tundra right here in front of me. Took us probably about an hour to get through all the, the brush and the bog and we got over here and got within about 200 yards and he stepped out broadside and one shot. We've got just one tag, it's a long shot, a wolf tag is all that's left but uh, yeah we'll keep our eyes peeled but we got a little bit of work to do and uh, pilot found a strip, uh, looks like probably a mile away, maybe a little bit more so where he can land so we'll cart the meat, we'll do two trips of meat, take it easy and do a couple loads of meat to that strip and then we'll hike back to camp and we've got just one more meal of uh, sheep meat left. That's right. And so that'll that'll do us just right. So yeah, congrats, man. It's oh. been uh, been my pleasure hunting with you the last nine days. We're not just quite done yet, but uh, excellent job. Jeff was ready to shoot, ready to hike, ready to hunt, and uh, and it all paid off for us. So again, congrats, Jeff. Excellent job. Yeah, thank you very much. We ended up with about a three quarter mile pack, maybe a mile. Do a little spin for me. That's a big caribou rack. Very nice. Jake actually just landed there now. So he's waiting for us. To, we did it in two loads rather than kill ourselves with all of our gear. But she's a hot one today. Thank goodness we got a little bit of breeze. It's making it tolerable. Made her. Almost old. Got a little warm, did ya? Yeah. Just like that, the caribou's gone. And it's off. Very cool. That's nice getting that kind of service. Saved us lots of work. Yeah, we left the hill, I think it was 8.40. Not even two o'clock. Pretty good. Darn good. Really good. Giving her. You can try. I don't think that's as big as the one we saw earlier, is it? Doesn't look like it. You'd have been a lot closer, but I don't think we'd have caught up to that one. He's hauling. Yeah, he is. There he comes. We're just hiking our way back to camp. We left our stuff right there on that ridge and then camps. Oh, six, seven hundred yards beyond. We made her. Made it. This is where we left. Oh, man. I figured we put on 11 miles today. If we weren't heavily loaded, we were going to beat heck. <laughs> Except for the last three miles. It's 
warm. Glad that's behind us. Got a little bag of water here we're gonna dip into. The old hat is drenched with sweat and water. Mm -hmm. Dipped her in there to cool me down. Right out in the middle of that red flat is where we shot them. Alrighty, we got a little bit of leftover butter. Four more sheep steaks, back straps. So garlic in there. Mix that with our mashed potatoes or uh, fried potatoes, American fries. It's gonna be some good eating there. Yes, sir. Fine, fine evening. Good stuff. Darn good stuff, isn't it? Oh, man. Mm. Oh yeah. Yummy. Uh, it's been an incredible hunt. Uh, beautiful country. And uh, really a, a storybook ending to my hunt. Uh, being able to fill my tags on uh, doll sheep, uh, bear, and uh, the caribou today. Um, something I'll never forget as long as I live. It's an uh, experience I hope maybe uh, I can get back up here again. I'm excited to get home and, and share every moment uh, with my family, with my friends. You're curious or you have ever wondered or thought about coming up here and, and doing a hunt like this, whether you have the means uh, readily available to you or not, if not, then save up and, and make plans and, and come up here if this is something you want to do, because you, I promise you, uh, you will not be disappointed. This is just just the view alone is is worth the price of admission it really is and then to have uh you know a beautiful day like today is to top everything off i just i very very privileged to be here uh, i want to thank my wife for setting this whole thing up uh, amazing woman and uh um, I'm glad that uh, I get to spend my life with her. And I look forward to sharing, like I said before, all this with her. The final plane ride is about to come. Bittersweet, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Time to head for home. Yeah, excited to see the girls, but. I don't know, I'm not ready to leave. Yeah, I know that feeling. Jeff's a simple, blue collar, God fearing man. Had he not taken a single animal on his hunt, I don't think his attitude and appreciation of his adventure would have been much different. His humility, and reverence for the entire wilderness experience made it my pleasure to guide him. To this day, Jessica Studebaker is the only wife to ever call me to book a hunt for her husband. Over the phone, I joked with her that he must take out the trash and never forget to put the toilet seat down. She just laughed and said, no, Jeff's too selfless to do this for himself, so I'm doing it for him.
That's a wrap for the Brooks Range season. Good year, great year, went by pretty quick. 30 some odd days, caribou, grizzly, sheep. It was a good month. Now I'm heading to Western Alaska, moose, grizzly, and brown bear. Synchronized flying going on here. Got a lot of clocks on this thing. <laughs> <laughs> if it weren't for my wife uh, booking this hunt, she absolutely blew me away with this one. Uh, she's always full of surprises, but this one definitely takes the cake. Alrighty, we got a little bit of leftover butter. Four more sheep. Steaks, back straps. The little guy, I'll give that one to Jeff. <laughs> I'm gonna try a couple whole cloves of garlic. What would you give for a shot of whiskey right now? <laughs> I was just, we were just about ready to start. I was like, well, I just uh, lifted up the bags, figured out what, how we're gonna do the loads, and then uh, there's Jeff holding a flask of whiskey. So, are they all good surpri surprises? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know she'll be watching this. <laughs> Sorry, I, didn't, I just had to throw that in there. <laughs> oh yeah, what am I gonna say? <laughs> <laughs> My client's a carpenter, so I saw it only fitting that he should do the honors of cutting the skull. I told him he's got sawzall arms. Gotta do something, earn my keep. I'm doing a fine job. Should, should we do that when we get to the bottom? Or we'll make it interesting and have it now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think we could take a nip right now. Bob, how big was your ram anyways? He was uh, 16 and a half inch bases, 40 inch horn. Yeah. <laughs> and that was that was the little one. Yeah. You, 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 let, you let the stud go for seed. <laughs> take the edge off. That's what you should have done, taking a nip of that before you shot. Probably. Calm your nerves. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not a big whiskey guy, but I'll take a nap. That's about it. Yeah, so now I'm about to teach Jeff how to turn on the Alaskan Guide air conditioning. <laughs> this is how you spot grizzly bears. Stay cool while doing it. Thank you. Been packing that around for the past six days, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that and that heavy rifle. <laughs> Hey, it paid off though. Oh, that it did. Heck yeah, it did. Jeff, how was your hut out here? Awesome. It was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> He's speechless. What can yeah. he say? Speechless. That's You've never run for public office, have you? <laughs> <laughs> for more information on other DVDs, books, and modern day mountain man apparel, log on to BillyMolesAdventures.com. Here you'll also find information on Alaskan hunting opportunities with Billy for doll sheep, caribou, moose, brown bear, grizzly bear, as well as white-tailed deer hunting in Wisconsin. Much of Billy's off-season is devoted to public speaking. He travels across the country sharing his knowledge and passion for the wilderness at corporate events, schools, conservation organizations, wild game dinners, Christian outreach events, and much more. Billy is a master storyteller. Attendees are sure to be entertained, educated, and inspired. 
Log on or call for more information.